I'm Lisa Bronner, and you are on the Going Green Facebook page. We are today Going Green Live with chocolate, and it doesn't get much better than this. Today I am joined by our All One Chef, Kimmy D'Amico, and I'm thrilled that she's here to lead us through some recipes using the brand new Dr. Bronner's Magic All One Chocolate. I wanted to introduce Kimmy some more. She has been with us at Dr. Bronner's for seven years, and her current capacity is All One Chef. Um, and so seven years last Friday was, uh, was her start date. And so I um, wanted to let you get to know Kimmy a little bit. So Kimmy, what was the first thing you learned to do at Dr. Bronner's? The first three days that I spent at Dr. Bronner's, I learned the Michael Jackson Thriller Dance with the MFB team. So the MFB team is our magic foam experience, and the purpose of MFB is to... Uh, have fun with everybody. We bring fun to you know to our events, the, you know to the company. Um, anytime we have a tour, all those things. Yes. Yeah, so they bring joy. They use our magic snow foam. And so uh, yes. Yeah, so the first your first learning was the thriller dance. I mean, what else do you need to learn to uh, to start <laughs> a new business? Um, and then you have moved in various spots around the company. What what other places have you worked? I worked in bar soap, um, lip balm, uh, liquid soap, and now I'm in the cafe. In the cafe, yes, the cafe. And so, and you picked up some other skills along the way. Uh, I learned how to drive the fire truck. I have my Class A driver's license, and so that was one of my things that I did with the Magic Film Experience was got to drive the fire truck to our uh, different events that we have. Now not everybody knows that the soap company has a fire truck, and uh, but we do. It's um, uh, an absolutely gorgeous fire truck that we use to celebrate everything, I don't know. Um, I don't, you probably won't be able to see this, but this is something, this is a little sticker I have of the fire truck uh, that I brought along because Kimmy, uh, in honor of Kimmy's joining us today. Um, Kimmy, now you are the All One Chef and the cafe coordinator. What does the All One Chef do? I get to bring more happiness to the company. I get to create baked goods and sweets and snacks to, to give to everybody and just brings them joy. Yes, because eating together is always bonding. Yes. At home, at work. So, uh, so that's why Kim is a perfect person to come and share with us some ways to use the new Dr. Bronner's uh, Magic All One Chocolate in cooking. Now, as though it's not delicious enough to eat a chocolate bar by itself, we're going to add it to a few recipes today to elevate the experience even more. So let me introduce you to the Dr. Bronner's Magic All One Chocolate in case you have not seen it before. So. This is, uh, this is the package. And doesn't it look, I mean, it kind of reminds you a little bit of our soap bottle, a little bit, but it also reminds you of just that classic um, chocolate bar experience. Uh, so we call it the magic chocolate because it is the result of uh, an amazing fair trade, organic, and regenerative organic effort. It might sound kind of strange that a soap company is selling chocolate. Those two don't usually go together, but it all goes back to the fact that everything is interconnected. And in our soaps, in our bar soaps, we use palm oil. Palm oil has a pretty legendary problem, but one of the, uh, the ways that we have made a truly sustainable palm oil is using a technique that intercrops other, other plants with palm. And one of those crops that help palm grow really well is cocoa. And so after years of having cocoa growing with our palms, with our farmers' uh, uh, oil palms, um, and they were selling the cocoa to high-end chocolatiers, eventually we thought, hey, why don't we use that cocoa ourselves? So we bought it off the farmers in addition to the palm, the, the oil from the palms, and eventually created this chocolate bar. So we're going to start by making ourselves a coffee to drink while we're working. This is a great, easy way to use the chocolate. I want to show you uh, how gorgeous this is. So this slips off, and if you want to hear that story I just told you about where it comes from, if you open up the wrapper, the story is right inside. So in case you can't remember it, just go get yourself a bar. And then the bar is going to remind you of something. So check this out. It is made for sharing. It is made for 
sharing. It comes in seven segments, seven pieces, and I don't know that the camera can capture this, but each piece has a word on it. It says, for we are all one or none, all one, which is Dr. Bronner's motto. And these break off really easily so that you can share them. Now, I unwrap the coconut praline, and Kimmy, I'm going to give you the crunchy hazelnut butter. And while she's unwrapping it, I want to direct your attention to all of the varieties we have over here. The salted dark with the purple, the coconut praline with the pink, and then we have the salted whole almond, the salted almond butter, the crunchy, I'm uh, sorry, the uh, crunchy hazelnut butter, and the roasted whole hazelnut. So we're just going to take a square of our chocolate, drop it in the coffee. It's going to melt beautifully. Thank you. Yeah. Give that a stir. And so uh, all of these melt gorgeously. The butters in the coffee are beautiful. The, the hazelnut, the almond, as well as the smooth coconut praline. A little bit of milk. And now we are going to be ready to go for our cooking. So there's your first really easy way to bring the chocolate, the magic chocolate, into your in your day. And now we're going to move on to our first recipe. All right, so the first recipe that we're going to do is, I, I absolutely love it because it's innovative and delicious. And as a foodie, that's just like a fantastic combination because it, it makes people think, wait, what? <laughs> so this first recipe is the magic chocolate balsamic glaze. Balsamic and chocolate together in a glaze. So you think chocolate's sweet, but we're going to twist that and turn it to use in a savory. So uh, we're going to fold up our ingredients here. So Kenny, how did you come up with this uh, chocolate balsamic glaze? Well, most recipes, you know, that have chocolate in them are sweet, and I thought, you know, what would be better is to do a savory type chocolate glaze thing, you know, so I, I, um, I love balsamic, and so I thought, I'm going to try to put the two together and see what happens, so, and it's amazing, and it works, <laughs> it totally worked, it, when she sent me this to try, I was like, wait a second here, it was amazing, the roast, it, put it over roasted vegetables, uh, which just takes your vegetables to the next level, um, for your, you know, entertaining or just for your family, uh, and then, you know, tell your kids you're serving vegetables with chocolate, they're, they're going to at least be interested enough to try it. So, um, so we're going to start by reducing some balsamic vinegar. So I'm going to have you yeah, I'll measure, measure that out. How much? It's a half a cup of okay. balsamic vinegar. And we noticed when we were testing that, that different balsamic vinegars really had a different flavor profile. Um, and we ended up going with this Napa Organic, yeah, Napa Valley Organics, the five, the five star one. The five star one. Um, of course, you can use whichever balsamic you like, but this is the one that we found worked really well for us. So there's a half a cup of. And we're going to reduce it, which means to evaporate it out so that it's um, about half, half that, so a quarter cup. All right, can you even have you turn on our snazzy stove? We're using this instead of my stove so that my back isn't to you. Now I will use the stove. There, there we go. go. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's going. All right. And then while this is reducing, um, Kimmy is going to chop up. And for this one, I chose the salted dark chocolate. And it's going to take two of the pieces. And I just find, I find the chocolate. If you want to grate it, you can grate it. Um, so the words we're chopping up here are for we. For we, yes. So I just take little tiny. You're almost shaving it. Yeah. 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 
That's going to make it melt probably a little more quickly. Yeah. So the salt and dark is uh, is the uh, the purple label. And as you can see on my board over there, uh, this is 70% dark chocolate. It's vegan. It's sweetened with coconut sugar. Um, it's organic, certified organic, and fair trade. Okay, now this is bubbling. To me, is that, is that a good yeah, thing? Yeah, it's just kind of simmer, and you're just reducing it to half of what it... Okay. So we're going to reduce it down to about a quarter of a cup. Okay. So, I mean, the, I'm looking in here, it's, it's, it's not very deep in here, so right. you wouldn't want to walk away from this because it's so, very yeah, deep. Yeah, you want to yeah, watch it. Okay. Now, as I said, we're, uh, we're going to put this over roasted vegetables, and it is amazing that way. Um, and so what vegetables have, have you um, chosen? We've prepared um, uh, butternut squash, uh, Brussels sprouts. We're going to try chocolate on Brussels sprouts. It's amazing. Um, sweet potatoes and carrots. Yeah, so a nice harvest assortment there. Yeah, nice autumn. And yeah, mm -hmm. we, you, now we roasted these ahead of time. You know what, Camille? I don't think that's stain it. Let's bring that out here a little bit. Um, how did you roast them? I put them in the oven, or actually I you know, prepared them, put them on a, on a sheet pan, drizzled them with uh, coconut oil, added some, a little salt, a little pepper, and then put some thyme that I picked out of our garden. And then it roasted, what was that, at 375? Uh, yeah, I started it at 375. Okay, took about half an hour? Yeah, it took about 30, 40 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a nice thing to start your dinner prep with and then, you know, go to the next thing, come back. Okay, how is this, how is this looking? We're almost there. Almost there, okay. I've noticed that balsamic is really having a, kind of a day in the sun. Like, you're seeing balsamic on various, yeah. various things, balsamic glazes of various sorts. I love balsamic. Yeah. I use it almost every day. Right, right. That you can do a whole cookbook on balsamic vinegar alone, and, and there's so many different kinds of balsamic out there. I mean, you can really play around with it and see where, where your taste profile, you know, what you like to, what you know, what, what taste you like. Because there are sweet ones, there's more sour. There's thicker ones, there's thinner. This one tends to be a little bit more on the thinner side. Okay, so it might take a little longer yeah. to reduce. Now we. We're discussing like so. Kimmy's been sending me the glaze, and I've gotten to try it ahead of time. Um, and you know, I was sitting there with the glaze, thinking, "What can I put this on besides the veggies? It's delicious on the veggies." And so I discovered that it actually also tastes amazing on cheese. Uh, if you get some nice strong cheeses, like really some good, or cheese. And then you, I thought if you know, um, it would be really good on strawberries. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, doing like a salad of strawberry salad with the spinach and you know some goat cheese or so now you're putting chocolate <laughs> on the salad. I absolutely <laughs> love it. Oh my goodness, that's the best. That's the best. All right, so this I can tell that it's getting down there. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, I'm ready to take it off? Yeah, we'll okay. Take it off. Okay. And then we're gonna add the chocolate, the chocolate mm -hmm. chocolate to this. Yeah. We're going to add the chopped chocolate and so let it sit there for about 15 seconds for it to start yeah. melting. It's going to melt pretty quick. Yeah. You want, did you want the whisk for this? Yeah, that was probably might be better. There you go. And then I added a generous pinch of salt 
even though the chocolate is salted, because you're putting it on vegetables, I found it a little bit more, it just adds just a little bit more salt to it. Mm -hmm. So four ingredients, balsamic, the chocolate, the sweetener, and salt. And you saw how quick it was. So yeah. Something really quick that we should put in. And you can prepare it ahead of time and just warm it before you put it on a vegetable. Right. Okay. Which is really great for holidays when things are really busy. And now we get to ladle it on veggie. So if you're assigned to bring vegetables to your holiday dinner table and you think, oh man, that doesn't sound very fun, this is a way to make everyone be talking about your vegetable platter. And you can get your kids to eat more vegetables because it has chocolate on it. <laughs> now, it's, it's certainly not overwhelming. In fact, if you didn't tell people it had chocolate and they tasted it, they might have to think for a minute, what is that? You know, it's not what you would expect to find on your vegetables. It has a little bit of depth to the, to the balsamic. Exactly. And a little bit goes a long way because yeah. both the dark chocolate is an intense flavor, balsamic is an intense flavor. So it's going a little bit. You don't want to drown your, your vegetables. <laughs> All right. Now is the fun part. You ready? I want to try the Brussels sprout. <laughs> I'm telling you, this was my, my addition. It's amazing. I haven't tried it on Brussels sprouts yet. Well, I do hope she likes it because we're alive. I know. Quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Really? Yeah. I know, right? You are that is so good. I'm gonna go for another one. <laughs> okay, so yeah, as you can see here, it's just a gorgeous contrast for one thing. The, the color combination of all the, the fall colors and then the highlight of the dark, dark glaze. Um, gorgeous on your on your buffet and absolutely amazing. It's so good. <laughs> all right, yep. we have to put this aside. I know, now. Yeah. We have to move on to the next <laughs> round. <recipe. laughs> okay, I'm going to put this one over here. Okay, so that was our first one, the balsamic glaze, the chocolate balsamic glaze. And before we get to the next recipe, I want to remind you of a couple things. First of all, I'm Lisa Bronner, and with me today is Kimmy D'Amico. She is our all one chef at Dr. Bronner's, uh, and her job is to uh, keep us all well fed and happy through her gorgeous uh, creations. Uh, she also coordinates our vegan lunches that we have every day. So our second recipe is the chocolate chunk magic cookies. This is this is amazing. Uh, so Kimmy, you came up with this recipe. What? Uh, tell us how you came up with that. Um, I I make a lot of different cookie recipes at work, and they're vegan and gluten free. And I had an oatmeal cookie recipe that was just kind of was okay, you know. But um, I decided to use, I took that recipe and decided to use one of the chocolate bars. And I went with the whole hazelnut, and then instead of using raisins, which is your traditional oatmeal recipe, um, I went with cranberries. So it just like kicked it up a notch. Mm -hmm. So And they are incredible. How, how often do you make these at work? I do a baking about, every, oh, like I bake a treat every week. And we have a food truck that comes on Fridays as part of the, the catering company that we use. Um, so on that day, not only does people, you know, not only does um, everybody get to, you know, have stuff from the food truck, they also get one of my treats. That is amazing. Uh, I mean, it's absolutely incredible. The food truck also is you know, complimentary for the employees. Um, the couple other of the of the ingredients that we're going to use in this uh, in this recipe is the uh, Dr. Bronner's makes uh, regenerative organic coconut oil. This is uh, certified uh, organic, fair trade, and the regenerative organic. If you're not familiar with that, you can head over to my blog that um, describes what that new certification is. And Kimmy, uh, we also make this is the whole kernel. 
We also make a white kernel oil. Is there a difference if you choose to use one coconut oil or the other? Um, the white has less of a coconutty flavor, I find. And I prefer the coconut flavor. Mm -hmm. um, very rarely do I, do I pick the white kernel, but there's some people out there that right. prefer that. So if you, if you didn't want the coconut flavor, go, right. go for that white kernel. Yeah. Um, and then it, the, so everything we're making today is vegan. What Kimmy cooks in the uh, in the all in kitchen is is vegan. Um, the chocolate bars are vegan as well. Um, and so we're also using a vegan butter, which is uh, Miyoko's. So uh, tell us about this vegan butter. Um, actually, this is my favorite vegan butter. I've tried you know different ones throughout the years, and when Miyoko's came up with this one, I thought I'll give it a shot, and it really tastes like butter. So I like to add it to some of my, my vegan recipes because I do like the butter flavor in, especially in cookies. I mean, who doesn't like a buttery cookie? So it's just, it's a really good, it's a really good substitute for, for everything. Right, good, good. Now if you, if you aren't vegan or you don't care, uh, you are, you're welcome to use regular butter in place of the vegan butter. You'll also notice that, uh, our vegan egg uh, substitute is made with flaxseed meal and water. And water, and that makes a it makes a, a great com uh, combining agent for the cookies to keep you know eggs keep cookies together. So the flaxseed acts in that. And so if you didn't again want to make them vegan or you didn't have flaxseed meal, you could use two regular eggs Correct. instead for that. All right, so let's dive into making the magic chocolate chunk cookies. The fun part. The fun part, I know. <laughs> we, we had our vegetables, albeit with chocolate, and now we're going to have dessert. dessert. We're going to have dessert. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, combining the wet ingredients first. Right. That's cool. And as I mentioned, we're going to uh, post the recipes at the end um, so that you uh, you know, get to see them then. So just all the wet ingredients are Yeah, in. so the wet ingredients, um, Okay, so if you do want to make the vegan eggs, uh, can we soak these for about 10 minutes ahead of time? This is just the two tablespoons of flax meal with uh, six tablespoons okay. of water. Okay, and that makes an egg substitute. Okay. So it's equivalent to two eggs. Two eggs, two eggs. Okay, okay so that's our vegan eggs. And then what else are we going to add here? We're going to add a quarter cup of the coconut oil. Okay. And it's melted, so it mixes in better. And then, what? and then a quarter cup of the Miyoko's butter, the vegan butter. Mm -hmm. So we'll add that. Okay, and then we have two, uh, we're using two sugars. We're using uh, coconut sugar. Okay, and that's so this dark, yeah, dark and that's, one. that's a quarter cup of coconut sugar. Mm -hmm. And coconut sugar is also the sweetener in the chocolate bar itself. Yeah. The chocolate bar doesn't use cane sugar, it uses coconut sugar. Believe it. Might have a lower glycemic index. Yes. Okay. And then, and then I'm using a half cup of the uh, organic cane sugar. Cane sugar. Okay. I find that coconut sugar adds the richness of a cup brown sugar. Uh, it has kind of, yeah. Uh, that has a molasses content there. Yeah, I'm not sure. You bet. No, it does act like brown sugar. Okay. And then we have um, a, a half a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, now you were telling me earlier you don't measure vanilla. I never measure vanilla because vanilla is one of those things, that, you know, I kind of learned it from my mom. She would say pinch for the pot. I say you measure vanilla with your heart. That sounds good to me. You don't want to go overboard on it though because it does have alcohol in it and it can react to the to oh. the baking. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry about <laughs> alcohol. <laughs> no, okay. All right, so we're going to combine these with the, uh, with, uh, just mix that in really well. Yeah. So we said wet ingredients, but the sugars are going this, in here. Yeah, you mix the sugar. You always mix your sugars and your oils together. There's probably some good food chemistry reason. Yeah. Why you do that? I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I did prep her ahead of time on that one. Okay, so we've got these mixed, and then you're gonna mix the dry ingredients. Yeah, that's what you can do in there. The, the dry ingredients. I'm gonna go with a quarter teaspoon of sea salt a half a teaspoon of baking soda, and then the good part right here is um, a teaspoon of cinnamon. Okay. And then we're going to do three quarters of a cup of the Bob's Red Mill uh, one-to-one gluten-free flour. 
And I chose that flour because it's, it's made with rice as opposed to their other flour that's made with um, beans. And it just, it, it just is better for cookies, I think. Okay, it so it tastes better. So these are not only vegan, they're also gluten-free. Gluten-free, right. right. And then we're gonna go with two and a half cups of uh, quick oats. And you want to use, if you have the larger oats, you can put them in your food processor, but you want them so they're, they're small pieces. Is that really the difference between old-fashioned oats and quick oats? I don't know. I, I, think, think, I think you're right. Yeah. OK. Sorry. So I just have done that when I, when I haven't had the quick oats. Yeah. It's a good substitution. So, yeah. So OK. So you're going to mix up the dry. Dry. And then you just kind of twist that. And mix that together. And then you're going to pour your wet ingredients into. All right. Now, this is the fun part. We discussed this, and Kenny said the best way to combine these two is. Well, you first kind of give it a stir with the spatula, and then once you can't stir it anymore, then you get to use your hands. <laughs> so, it kind of brings out your inner child. I love it. The kids <laughs> themselves are going to love this one. There's something really therapeutic about yeah, yeah, and then yeah. once you, um, you know, once it's mixed, then when you put your, your, so while you're doing that, Lisa, okay, you get that mix. Oh, oh so I'm gonna go with my yeah. Hands. All right, all right. So I get to explore my inner child. Yeah, it's like adult Play-Doh. Now the best, not the best, because there's lots of great things about this recipe. But one great thing is, um, in case you hesitate to eat raw cookie dough because of perhaps eggs. Because this is vegan, so you know you could just eat the whole last straw if you wanted to. Okay, so we're going to cut this into. Okay, so we're using for this one the roasted whole hazelnut, and that's the blue one. The, the, yeah, the blue one. This happens to be my favorite bar, so I'm particularly excited. I think about it's this. one of my favorites too. Yeah, I, I just like the love, nuts. I love the hazelnut. Yeah, yeah, show the bottom, show the bottom of that bar. Can you see, like, those are and they, significant. Just difference. about every bite of the bar, will have, you'll get in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're not talking some paltry little hazelnuts. No, they're, they're, they're like chunks. Yeah, they're like whole hazelnuts. They really are whole <laughs> hazelnuts. Yeah. So for these cookies, um, you know, they're chocolate chunks. So chunks. we're just going to, you know, cut them into little chunks. And the way i found it works the best is if you cut this way on the bar. Okay, so you don't pre-divide the segments. You right, okay. just, just if you have a knife, you know, some people have a little knife and, and just do what works. Yeah, so I just. So we, we chop one up ahead of time, just to save time, but this, so this is bar number two, they're both going into the recipe. And then I just cut across this way, because you kind of want to cut the nuts a little bit. So they're ending up being, I don't know, a quarter inch maybe chunk? Yeah. You need to measure chunk. And, you know, you can have some finer pieces too, because then that gets mixed into the cookie dough, but, you know, mostly chunks. So, so you, of course, could substitute any of the chocolate bars if you don't like nuts or candy stuff. The salted one, the salted the almond. Right. Yeah, and the salted almond. Oh, the salt and yeah. almond, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So three of the bars have salt in them, and three don't. The three with salt, it was salted dark, the salted whole almond, and the uh, salted almond butter. Uh, the other three do not have salt, so that's um, a concern for you, but they're all vegan. And okay. then two of them don't have nuts, uh, the salted dark and the coconut cream. Don't so you nuts. can kind of see the chunks, you know, there's some that are bigger, there's some that are smaller, just However you'd like to. Yeah. Alright, it is really hard not to just you know, I know. eat that, but okay, I'll let you put it in here. <laughs> so we're putting in two bars of the whole hazelnuts. Okay. Do I mix this in with the cranberries or the cranberries? Um you can mix that in first. Okay. So it makes it a little easier. As you're doing it, I'll kind of Okay. Now those just regular whole cranberries? These are just whole dried cranberries. And these ones are the sweetened ones. They're sweetened with um, apple juice. Okay. So with, you can use, uh, I've used unsweetened okay. as well. And if you wanted, you, you could go with a raisin. Right, you could go with a Or you yeah. leave them out. Yeah, or other dried fruit would be good too. Oh, yeah. 
Um, and you, I like to leave them whole because I like to have a, like a whole piece, but you can't chop them if, you know, yeah. sometimes the cranberries are, are big. Mm -hmm. But these are, these are a good size. Right, right. They're about the size of the chunks of chocolate. That's so. good. So we're going to dump in a half a cup of cranberries. All right. I'm mixing away oh, here. This is mixing that. Okay. I'm going to clear out. I'm going to shake them. Yeah, I end up I end up cooking with my hands a lot too. I mean, obviously not hot stuff, but uh, there's just something really satisfying about getting right in here. There is mm -hmm. our best tool is our hands. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, Kimmy, when you make a batch of cookies for the entire staff, how many cookies do you have to make? I've done anywhere between 300 and 600 cookies. And how many times do you have to multiply the recipe to get? Um, I, well, this recipe, I times it by seven, and then I take that recipe and times it by four. Goodness gracious. So, wow. All right. So okay. eight. <laughs> we have a kitchen at, at, at work. So, all right. So, uh, I think we're well mixed here. Yeah, that looks great. Okay. All right. Delicious batter. Now, and with this batter, too, you, you can... Uh, this batter you, it makes between 12 and 18 cookies. Mm -hmm. You know, if you like bigger cookies, use a bigger ball. If you like smaller cookies, you can use, you know, a smaller amount. I like them kind of medium, so they're about like this size. I think that's a good cookie. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a satisfying. Yeah, you know, it's like, ah, yeah, I got the cookie. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so but you know, there's no cookie scoop here. You once again, in right the when you use your hands. So okay. what I do is I just take a scoop and I kind of. I've rolled so many cookies. It's just the palm of my hand. Oh gosh, one, one palm. You're one palming it. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Okay. I'm not trying to one palm and I might have to use two. And then I just kind of press it down a little bit. I feel like I didn't make mine big enough. And then just stick it on a part a cookie stamp, a cookie pan with a parchment paper. Okay. Well, sometimes if the chocolate, if you don't see the chocolate, you can move it. So it's pretty cookie. Awesome. Okay, so uh, yeah, put my nice. bowl down. Yeah. And just shake it a little bit. Yeah. All right. Good. Now, could you could you freeze this dough if you wanted to make? Yeah, I have actually taken the dough and I've I've frozen balls of it and you know done it on a, on a cookie sheet, froze it. And then just put them into a container, you know, for and then later. You just and you just, out. yeah, and then you just thaw, you know, just thaw it, and then bake it. Freshly baked cookie, yeah. you know, if you don't have the time for this you know, mess right before. This one has too much chocolate in it, so I gotta move. There's such a thing. <laughs> it wouldn't stick. It wouldn't stick together. I guess I guess that's the problem. Okay. And this would be a fun project to do with your kids. Please. Yeah, I kind of love that. Yeah. I'm not sure how much of the dough would make it to the cookie sheet. I know, because you can't eat this dough. You, know? you can't eat it, yes. All right, we have a question I want to answer that has come in for our nut allergy households. Should the plain bars be avoided? Um, they, the salted dark, uh, which is our plain bar, does not have nuts in it. And so um, it's... Uh, but it is made in a facility that processes uh, you know, the other chocolate bars. So, uh, you know, whatever the need is of your family to be aware of that. But, and there's also no nuts in the coconut praline. Um, it, it, that depends, uh, the, the coconut is not usually included in nut allergies, but um, you, of course, need to know the details of your situation for that. So if you're okay with coconut, then the salted dark and the coconut praline does not have, um, you know, other kinds of nuts in it. It does have coconut sugar, both of them. So. All right. I have one tip about this dough. If it's too sticky, like this right now, this dough is really it's actually really warm here. Yeah, it's yeah. really sticky. You can pop it in the fridge for okay. half an hour. Let it warm up. Yeah. Okay. Do we? Is that enough on this cookie? Yeah, sugar? I think that's good. Okay. I didn't mean let it warm up. I meant let it firm, firm up. Yeah. Firm up. Sorry. Yeah. I can't speak and <laughs> at the same time. Okay. Now, there are a few extra chunks in the bottom oh, of the so bowl. We just take those and we just stick those on top of it. Okay. My hands are like 
I've lost my hands. I've lost my hands. I'm going to let you do that because I'm just making a video. Jenna's really sticky. I would, if I was doing this at work, I would be like, okay, it's time to put this in the fridge for a yeah. half hour. Take a break and drink your coffee. Yeah, yeah. exactly. All right. Um, there we go. <laughs> These are so good. All right. Debbie wants to know, can I ask a question for you? Okay. How much chocolate do you eat at work when you're cooking with chocolate? Well, some days I eat a lot of chocolate, and some days I don't even touch it. Well, we didn't talk about one of your other roles. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so Kimmy is on the quality control team. Wouldn't well, yeah. you like that job? And that, you know, um, yeah, I get to try all the chocolates once, about once a month or so. Every time a new batch comes yeah, in, we make sure that meets our standards, right. flavor profile. Yeah, and last week we did one that was um, to check for the shelf life, mm -hmm. to see how our chocolate's holding up. Oh, okay. The shelf life and stuff, and the, how the flavor profiles change and, and stuff, because chocolate is, you know, it does change after it's, you know, after it's aged, just like wine. Wine and cheese and other excellent things in life. Yes. So, <laughs> excellent. So yeah. So uh, and you actually were trained on how to how, about to how to taste the chocolate, all the different flavor profiles that are in chocolate. I had no idea. I just used to eat a lot of chocolate and just liked it. <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm finding myself when I eat when I do eat any kind of chocolate, I'm like, oh yeah, I can taste the you know the nuttiness of the chocolate or the I can taste the type of sugar that they use. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so on those days when you have to taste test the chocolate, you eat a lot more. Yeah. That's <laughs> not <laughs> too much. Too much. <laughs> All right. I need to wash my hands before I touch this tray here. Yeah. Now, I will mention, since uh, I think I'm using soap here, I'm using, of course, the Dr. Brown's Castile soap, and my Bowling Health Dispenser here. If you haven't done that, you, you need to. It's uh, one part soap, three parts water. I'm going to pull them up. I'm making these a little bigger. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is all the unwritten stuff of a true chef. You know, we follow the recipe and then she comes in and all she's doing is sticking more of the goodies into the, into the batter. Um, and so, uh, so these are ready to go in the oven where we need another cookie sheet to do the rest of them, so we'll do those later. Um, and then we have a pre-baked batch. Uh, so that we can, you know, show you how delicious they are by eating them in front of you. <laughs> so I'm going to pop this in the oven. Now, at 350, oh wait, I'll look to my camera. So at 350 for 12 minutes, but you're going to want to... Yeah, 12 minutes is perfect for... For my oven, for your oven. Yeah, so ovens are different, so it might be yeah. uh, a bit of a range there. Right. So these are some that can be baked, baked ahead of time, and you want to bake them until, what are you looking for? Just a kind of a light golden color around the edges. What I sell them on the table. Yeah, you, know, you can kind of see a little gold, and then look at that perfect gold bottom right there. <laughs> right. Now, do, you, do, you, do they continue to cook a little bit once you bring them out? Yeah, they'll continue to cook just a little bit on the cookie sheet. So I let them cool on the, rack, on the cookie sheet for about 10 minutes, and then I pull them off. Yeah, and put them on a the ten know, minutes on the on yeah, the sheet, on the sheet. Yeah, yeah and they the also sheet. because they, you know they are gluten free, so they don't have the same combining agents. You know, it's, it's flax seeds. It's a little different. They're a little more delicate when they're hot, so they they can fall apart. So you need that ten minutes. So you need that. Yeah, you just like let them chill for a minute. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and but they also take a little longer to cool down because you know they're a substitute cookie. Right. You're like this is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Kimmy, I think we need to try this delicious creation in front of us so we can show everybody how, yeah. how delicious it is. So, um, these are these are really... I like mine with coffee. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I was just kind of... I'm, oh, I'm a dunker. I love it. I love it. I don't think I've done that yet. <laughs> I'm learning from the master here. I just feel good. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, I a lot of cookies. Well, it's obviously working for you, so, you know, this is a good thing. I just love cookies. <laughs> Aren't there mellowing agents in chocolate, too? Mm -hmm. So, as I said, 70% dark chocolate, so you've got, um, you've got a, a good bit of chocolate in there, mm -hmm. too. 
Uh, you know, uh, all this chocolate is dark chocolate. We don't have a, a milk chocolate at the moment. Um, and my kids, when we originally brought it home, they're like, oh, it's all dark chocolate? Because that was a little intense for them. But uh, all of them found that coconut praline was uh, not as intense. So if you have somebody that's a little iffy on the dark chocolate, start them with the coconut praline. This actually could be a really great breakfast. It, I think it, that was one thing I wanted to mention because you you are using oatmeal and you're using a rice flour rather than you know wheat flour. Mm -hmm. There's a little more protein, right? You know, right, and then you've got your your cranberries and stuff. So, right. So, so and it's a little less sugar than you want. You. Yeah. So um, you know, you cook all the time. You're mm -hmm. constantly doing new things. Uh, what are some of the other Recipes you're thinking about, or you've already made, or I do. I just did for um, for Halloween. I created a ganache oh my for gosh. a brownie that I made for everybody for Halloween last Friday. That's amazing. And what what chocolate can you put in the ganache? I use the uh, the salted dark. Mm -hmm. um, I think next time I want to try one with the nuts, maybe the almond, right? And I'll you know just chop the. I'd like to see the little pieces in the ganache. Right. And I used the coconut cream for the ganache. So it's right. coconut cream and, and, the, and the chocolate. The two ingredients? Just the two ingredients. Like equal mm -hmm. Okay, well, there's another recipe for you right there. Yeah. That's amazing. And then the brownies themselves are an almond flour. Okay. So it's, you know, it's, it's a pretty healthy. Yeah, it's a pretty healthy brownie. Wow. So there's so much that you can do here. I encourage you uh, to stay tuned on the Going Green channel for other lives and other nifty info. And we will see you the next time we go green.